What's going on guys, Greg here. This is a uh, part two of a three-part video series that I'm doing for Plector Labs uh, soundboards and how to install sound files onto a Plector Labs soundboard. Um, the first part, which is up on my channel, is for the Nano Biscotti V4. And today we are going to talk about the Prism V5.1 or V5. Uh, they're essentially the same thing. Um, but yeah, so I'm gonna show you how to do this. And this is for a Mac because there isn't really a very good tutorial on any of these for a Mac. And a lot of the process is going to be very similar to the Nano Biscotti V4. There just happens to be more files on the V5, the Prism V5, that can be edited. So this is going to be more based on, or focused on, showing people some of those other files and what they can do with them. Um, but again, I'm going to go through the whole process for anyone who wants to do it, just because it makes it easier so you guys can see it done. And so let's get started. The very first thing you're going to want is a micro SD to USB reader, which is right here. You can see the micro SD slot there, you know, 10 bucks on Amazon. You can get them at Walmart or Best Buy for like five bucks. And like I said, it goes to USB. So once you have one of those, you want to get your micro SD card out of your Sabre and plug it into your computer. When you do that, you're going to have something like this show up. Uh, it's going to show up on the side. This is going to be all your files that are on your Sabre right now. And what you're going to want to do is take all these files, I'm going to highlight, and then copy. And what you're going to want to do is uh, you're going to want to go in, and on your computer, somewhere on your desktop or somewhere, this is all my, my commission files and whatnot, but you're going to go in, you're going to create a folder, and you're going to have your original files and your edited files. And so I copied all this, and I'm going to post or paste it in here and I'm going to paste it into here. And what this is going to allow, you're going to have original files in case anything goes wrong that you can mess with, or sorry, that you can put back on the saver, and then you're going to have the files that you're going to mess with. So we are done with this for now. And now we have this. So I'm going to do kind of what I did last time, where I'm going to edit only one bank um, and show you kind of the, the override file and the config the, the config files within the, the saver. So you're going to start with going to your edited files. You're going to choose the bank you want to edit. For me, it's going to be bank one. Command A will click on everything in here. And then if you hold command, you can you can unhighlight that. The config and the LED and everything. So we can then get rid of all of our other files. I personally like to to organize my files because I have OCD about these and the up selection now it just looks nice and pretty so now these will always be at the top for you to, to edit um, and so next thing you're going to want to do is you're going to want to paste a new sound font in here and so what you have to do is you have to go to saberfont.com so www.saberfont.com and I am on the page for Kseth right now because he is a partner of ours and so I'm going to use his fonts as an example. Um, basically, you're going to want to make sure that you're getting a sound font that is optimized for Plector Labs board. So if you see right above the mouse, you see that yellow toast, that is Plector Labs, whereas this right here is Nigon. So I'm going to go with, oh, what are we going to do today? Why not, I don't know, I'll just do the Duke. So you would go to Duke, which is his Count Dooku font. You would purchase it here download it, and once you download it, you can save it anywhere on your computer. Uh, for me personally, I keep it in a folder with all my sound fonts. And so I'm going to scroll down until I get to Duke, which is right here. And then as I mentioned beforehand, the nice part about Plector Labs boards is the fact that you can actually just take all of these files and you can just copy and paste them all right into the, right into your, your sound bank. So copy. Uh, which is Command C if you don't know, and then Command V is is paste. So copy paste into here, and now all your files are in here. What's nice is even though this is a Crystal Focus Eight optimized sound font, the Prism knows to only play the sounds it can play. So Prism has um, uh, I'm not even sure what the exact things. I know I know Prism doesn't have spin sounds. So let's use that as an example. So even the spin sounds are in here. Spin one, two, three, four, you know. It won't play those, those will never interfere because it just doesn't even look for them. So I can I can get rid of this. And so now I have 
my configure files for this one bank, all my sound files, and let's say that you wanted boot 2, which is what? No, it is finished. So let's say you wanted that to be your your main boot. Even though the prism will play, it'll shuffle through these. Um, let's say you wanted that to be just boot. So you just highlight this and name it boot, and change this to boot 2, and then... I've become more powerful than any Jedi. That would be your boot 2. Um, you can rename any of these to do anything on your saber. It doesn't have to be a boot, but it, it they're all optimized to do that, obviously. like You don't want to make your hum your boot, but you can, technically speaking, but don't. Um, now that you have all these on here like you want, uh, there are a couple things I'm going to show you quickly that make it a lot easier because the manual does a good job of explaining this, but showing you might make it a little bit easier. So... Uh, I'm going to leave the bolt because that I don't mess with very often, so I don't want to give bad advice on that. Well, but basically this can help um, when you have a blaster. Right now there's like a delay with the way the, the flash works and whatnot. So that's all in here. Again, read the manual. This isn't supposed to replace the manual. It's just supposed to give you guys a better view of how some of the things work. Um, so let's say we go into the config file here. This right here can be your settings for your drive. So if you don't have color changing, this will be, if you have an R, G, B saber, this would be red turned on all the way with a mix of all three for your flash on clash. So that would be about a white. Um, this is how it's mixed. These are your trident. Um, there's all these different things you can change. And as I highlighted in the last video, these four, flex and pulse, are something I mess with quite a lot where it changes how your saber flickers or pulses. Um, and yeah, so that's just some of the files. And then you also have the LEDs file, which, again, these are the onboard LEDs. There are four spots for onboard LEDs that you can you can put, or accent LEDs. And this is basically the on-off. So this right now is saying um, number one is on, number one is on, number one is on for 50 milliseconds, 50 milliseconds. And then this just all repeats. So... Sorry, I was letting people leave behind me. Um, and that's how this will go. So these are just kind of some of the... You can visualize the way the manual explains it, where this is just your accent LEDs, and this is how long they're on. And this is just basically repeat this loop. So I'm going to turn that off. And yeah, the last thing I'm going to show you is your override file. You don't need to touch this, this, or this. Just override here. Um, so you can see that this is like the volume of your saber, and the override file will control the entire saber, not just a, a bank, whereas what I had earlier will control just the bank it's in. Uh, so you have your volume, your type of switch, and then right here are your sensitivity settings, and then right here is how often swings and clashes can be triggered again, so it takes 200 milliseconds before a swing can be triggered again. And things like that. Um, and then here are your color profiles, which again, as I said earlier, is imagine if your saber was set up as R, G, B. This means right now you have a red saber with a white flash on clash. And here you have an R with a little bit of G, which means you know a little bit more of an orange saber with a white flash on clash. And so on. And it goes down. And these are all preset files. But that just kind of gives you an idea of how these things work. And then you can edit these to change your colors. And yeah, so that is how the override file works. Now, the most important part is getting all these new files back on your Prism V5. And what you have to do, and this is a part that confuses a lot of Mac users, is you actually have to reformat your card, which essentially is erasing it and then re-uploading. Um, what you have to do is you can go here and you can search for disk utility, utility, and then open it. And what you have to do, this is your, your computer, which you obviously don't want to mess with. This is your micro SD to USB storage, and then this is your actual micro SD card. And what you want to do to format is very simply make sure you're in on this. Erase. You can rename it if you want to, I don't obviously. You want to choose your format, MS DOS FAT, and erase. And if for some reason it doesn't go, you just that and then all you do from here is you have your edited files bank like I said this is here your edited files you want to highlight them all you want to copy them 
and then you want to go to your Prism V5 and paste. You do not want to drag and drop, you want to copy and paste. Um, and then that is it. And as I said last time, you technically can edit the text files without reformatting, but I do not suggest it. It's just, it's good practice to always reformat anytime you make any changes. So if you go in and you're in your, your edited files, and if you change just this one sound, you have to reformat all of it and copy and paste it back in. It's just how it's set up and that's, you know, how it is. And it's good practice to continue to do that. So now you're in your Prism V5 right here. All your sounds are on there. You reformatted and you are good to go. So now all you have to do is eject it. And when you do, you can pull your micro SD card reader out and you'll be good to go to plug that back into your saber. Um, so thank you guys. Like I said, this is part two of three of the video and the, the third one is gonna be for the Crystal Focus, which again, is gonna be more focused on some of the the uh, the features of the Crystal Focus, but it also is gonna show you guys how to add and remove sound fonts, etc. So like I said, I hope you guys learned something. I hope it was useful. And if you did, then uh, I will see you guys later on. All right, thanks.